Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, pour your Holy Spirit upon us that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scriptures today pose a question. How does God bring about change that moves toward peace? The texts present two pictures for us to think about. Two ideas of how God makes change happen. One is violent. One is nonviolent. One is vengeful and dramatic, and one is natural and emerges slowly. In the gospel, a wild denizen of the desert, an untamed prophet, threatens the religious establishment with divine consuming fire from the one who is to come. One idea of how God makes change is that God gets people who do wrong. God gets them violently, disruptively, even homicidally in order to set things right. God changes things by punishing and even obliterating those whom God does not favor. That's one idea of how God makes change. And then, by the grace of God, there's another idea. In Isaiah, a long dead stump the kind that sits in your yard and you think from time to time, you know, we should grind that out or at least cut it off at ground level. It makes it hard to mow the lawn or even landscape effectively. And that stump, well, it's been dead for so many years. The stump in Isaiah has been dead for many decades, even a century. But from this long dead stump, a shoot emerges transforming both the stump from which it grows, cracking it open slowly and unstoppably, and further changing it, inexorably changing the stump as the shoot continues to grow and make room for new growth. This is the other idea of how God makes things change, of how God brings change into our world, and specifically of the role of the one who is to come, and what that role will be, what that person will do, what role that person will have in the change. So we are left with two very different pictures, two images, one violent, one peaceful, one sudden, one slow and emerging over time, one with the aim of assuring that those who have done wrong get what's coming to them, and one that reveals the change to those who watch and wait. Finally, one where murder by fire is the ground from which God makes change, and another wherein God makes new life emerge from places thought to hold only death and decay. Our scriptures offer us two ideas of how God makes change, so which one is the right one? How does God make change happen? And because it's Advent, how does God in Christ use us to make change that moves God's creation toward peace? A very short look at human history will show evidence of many, many outbreaks of peace that have been led by unexpected people in unexpected places, emerging from what seemed dead, People who were blown outside their comfort zone to take up work toward peace. Blown by the wind of God's own spirit, powered by God's grace to commit uncharacteristic acts of generosity and daring and freedom. We don't expect oppressed, abused, and persecuted people to have the strength the capacity, the will, or even the intelligence to move people toward peace. But time and again, history proves that that assumption is wrong. People who have known exile, oppression, 
struggling and persecution, people who have at times lost faith in life, in their own life, in their own capacity to move toward life or health or peace, people who have wondered if they themselves are dead have been found unexpectedly sprouting the will and imagining the way to move toward peace. Those who live in the shadow of death have emerged as new life working toward peace. The mothers of the disappeared in Argentina who silently protested every week on the main plaza of the town for years the disappearance of their children during a dirty war. Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland collaborated in many different projects in many different communities to stand for peace during decades of terror and ethno-religious conflict. Millions of people took part in the Solidarity Union in Poland and they stood together against a repressive government and a police state and even mortal threat in order to bring freedom and peace to all the Polish people. Time and again, unexpected people have emerged from unexpected places to bring peace and work toward change. All of these and many more movements emerging from ground that seem dead have been inspired and sustained and given the power to imagine a different future by the Holy Spirit of God. These unexpected people persisted in their work in unexpected ways, even when under attack. The mothers of the disappeared were told it was illegal for them to assemble, and firing squads came out and faced them as they stood there silently. Catholics and Protestants who gathered together in Northern Ireland during the Troubles were threatened by their neighbors and threatened by the police. In Poland, those who joined the Solidarity Trade Union under communism, under a brutal, brutal dictatorship, they were under threat, and some of them died. And yet they persisted to move toward health and peace. Even in the times that we think people would be violent in response, there are t people who act, who speak nonviolently, peacefully, but persistently for peace. The violent response is understandable. We get why people would respond violently at times. We see this in the fiery speech of John the Baptist, one who knew repression, whose people knew repression, and who was actively preparing the way of the Lord, <coughs> and who got it wrong. He got it wrong when speaking to those who dared to come, those who were part of that repressive system, I think he got it wrong. I think John the Baptist, at least as the memory is recorded in the scripture today, I think he got it wrong. God does not work toward change through vengeance on sinners. And isn't that good news? Sinners in the room? God instead raises up new life from places of death. Like the Standing Rock Reservation. Now I'm going to ask you to listen carefully. The people at 8 o'clock said this was complex. This was complex to listen to. So I'm going to ask you to listen, because I'm talking about something that is happening and has continued to happen for many months. What is happening in st at Standing Rock cannot be described as predictable. We can't say, oh yeah, we knew that was going to happen. 
We here may have a variety of opinions about what is happening at Standing Rock, but we can't deny that something has been happening there most of this year. Native Americans are a group of people who have lived under more or less but absolutely constant oppression in the U.S. for centuries. Edward Curtis, the famous early 20th century photographer, recorded images of what he understood to be a dying race. Curtis understood that he was recording images so that we would know what those people looked like before the last of them died out. Native Americans were seen at the time as part of America's past, but not part of our future which became something of a self-fulfilling prophecy as the U.S. military systematically engaged in extermination of Native American communities and Christian missionary schools did their part by taking Native children forcibly from their homes and brutally punishing them if they spoke their language or took part in any of the rituals that they had learned from their parents or grandparents. Mark and I lived next to a reservation in North Dakota for a number of years, and the rate of death among young people, that is, death before the age of 25, was devastating. Death from alcohol, from accidents, from suicide, from violence. Life was hard. Life is hard on the reservation. And many young people took risks and did not see very much hope for life. The reservation was and is truly often a place of death and not very much a place of life. And now, at Standing Rock, more Native Americans have assembled than at any time in modern history. Something unexpected is happening. At, San, at Standing Rock, thousands upon thousands of Native Americans and other people from around the world, including this weekend U.S. military vets, have gathered, and they say their goal is to protect the water. They have gathered peacefully with religious ritual and prayer a primary feature of daily life, and they have gathered largely quietly and have organized to state and to reiterate and to declare and to stay, say again that water is life. This is unexpected. This is a voice coming from a place of silence, a shoot coming from a dead stump. Native Americans are the most impoverished people group in the U.S. They are the least educated. They are the most likely to drop out of school. They are the most likely to be unemployed, the least likely to own a home, and they as a group have the shortest expected lifespan among all racial groups in our country. There are no Native Americans in the U.S. Senate right now. Throughout U.S. history, there have been six. Very little is expected from Native Americans, and most of them don't expect very much from themselves. But something unexpected is happening. This year, a wind of change blew upon people from whom no one expected anything. The governor wants them to evacuate. The police have blocked a major highway into the area. Law enforcement have repeatedly used tear gas and sprayed water, water, on people in the camps when the temperature has dipped below 25 degrees. And still they persist. They are still there. They are not folding their tents. Still they gather for prayer. Every week, new people come. Now, I have no question that we have a whole host of beliefs about what should be happening there or what is happening there, but we have to ask, 
Why is this happening? Why is this happening? The continuing witness of nonviolent action is unexpected. From its beginnings last spring up to today. A commentator on the news said this this week, Standing Rock has taken on a life of its own. Is it possible? And this is, this is actually my serious question to you all. I'd love to hear your sense. Is it possible that the life it has taken on is the same life that we in faith have come to know? Is this the same new growth, a new possibility growing out of a totally unexpected, totally dead space? Is this the same kind of shoot that energized the mothers of the disappeared? and Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland, and the people of Poland under communism and a brutal dictatorship? Where life is, there is God. Where new life emerges, there is Christ. Is what is happening at Standing Rock part of this picture of how God brings about change and moves toward peace? Friends, I believe that John the Baptist got the question wrong, the question of how God makes change. In righteous anger toward the pernicious and vicious religious authorities of his day, caught in pastoral and prophetic emotion by the ongoing slaughter and brutal repression of God's own people, John the Baptist lashed out. By grace, we who sin daily, I who sin daily, are not approached in this way by our God. Our God finds the dead places inside us, and our communities, and our society, and our world, and lovingly, surprisingly, unexpectedly, raises shoots of new life, new possibility, new hope from where only deadness existed before. Let us continue our Advent preparation looking, looking, friends, for the places where God is acting and shoots are emerging and peace is brought to life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.